What is up, guys? It's your boy Black Rue back with another video. Before we get started, Q and the Ghost Saint. Let's get it. And the Ghost Saint in the building. Black Rue investing. Let's go. Misbeliever was black who invested With your money you ain't gotta be guessing Profits is what we manifested So we binge on a black who invested Misbeliever was black who invested Got course in this race we invested We got stocks we got crypto with a blessing So thank God for that black who invested Misbeliever was black who invested My man Indigo, what is going on guys? Um, Bull Run is bulling out here uh, let me get up my screen, and as usual, uh, we'll go share on Twitter. Well, what the again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you. <clears throat> so I think we are live. Yes, we are live. All right, perfect. So we'll go share to Twitter while people are coming in. Okay, let me just go over here and make sure we don't have too many buzzers going off. Let me change uh, my updates right quick. Oh, yeah! And let's see here. So now we're going to go to Twitter. Boom, 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 boom. And yes, guys, don't forget to come over and sign up to the channel. It is darkhorsewatcher.com. Take you straight to the channel where you can like and subscribe. And we're going to take our little live here. Give it to the people there in Twitter land. I don't know what just happened there. Didn't mean to do that. I don't know what's going on with my mouse today, guys. Oh, man. Not, not the greatest mouse thing today. Let's see what we got in the house over here. Soon as I grab this link and share it. All right, we did that. Boom, 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 boom. Tweet. Live now. So Bitcoin, just over 20K. Let's see, where are we here? Okay, so I did close that. We're good. What's up, HBCU Maker? What's up, Bird Dog? Appreciate it. By the way, guys, me, Bird Dog, and my guy Dion are going to go live here on the 17th. We're going to have a little panel. Um, you guys know um, Dion from. Let's go here to the lives right quick and then we can start talking coins uh you know dion from this video right here me and dion went live and we went live once before that and also if you guys are not familiar also bird dog and i also went live it's a little further down here like way further down i guess okay me and bird dog went live right here so definitely check that out and definitely check out Bird Dog's channel. By the way, uh, we had Richard Judge talking last night. He was in the uh, comments. I forgot to say, but I meant to say, check out Richard Judge's channel too. He's just getting his channel up off the ground. But um, I know he's been in this game like uh, with Benzinga and stuff like that. Like watching stuff on, watching my stuff on Benzinga. Check him out as well. So, um Bitcoin over 20K. Now, I know you guys have been watching for a while. HBCU maker, uh, Bird Dog, I know you're in the game. Um, you know, where you should have really like 
packed your bags is when things were boring, right? When we were over here in SBF land and everything was just ho-hum, right? That's when bags should have been packed, right? And you sell into this, this actual mini bull run, right? Bags should have been packed right here when we was at 15. But what do they always hit you with? We're going lower. We're going lower every time. Every time, like clockwork, they hit you with the we're going lower, right? Whereas, hell, we might go lower, but why not get it when something like bad has happened? Grab it at the low point. If we go lower, cool. I'll grab some more. But now I didn't miss out. You know what I mean? And I came on here that day telling people that exact same thing. Like, hey, look. Maybe we go lower. I don't know. But it's low now. I'm going to grab it. You know what I'm saying? So just food for thought for next time. Like if we get down to 10K or whatever at some point, this is food for thought. When something like when something hits like this, just grab some. Just, just dollar cost average. Grab it at the low point. If you think it's going to go even lower, don't grab as much. You know, um, that's just how I feel about it. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think out there. Thank you. Thank you, HBCU maker. I, 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 many thanks. Many thanks. I know we've been talking about it for a long time now. BitBoys just kind of got on the, on the, um, uh, peace, peace bird dog. Thanks for coming through, brother. Appreciate it. I know uh, Big Boy just got on the uh, bandwagon and a lot of people are enjoying that, but we've been talking LCX for a while around here. Um, a couple a couple nice things that we've been talking about really had some some real nice times. Uh, just like we mentioned Clean Spark, right? Uh, we've been talking Clean Spark since like a dollar seventy. Clean Spark was up to $2.76 here. So that's over a 50X as well. Um, yeah, we're, we're just, we're doing big things around here, right? Um, we're, we're doing big things around here. Um, I know we also mentioned Gala. Those were what, that was one of the big gainers too as well. Um, if we come over here and take a look right here at the okay we're gonna have to pull it up gala had gotten as low as under two cents and it's sitting at five so that's a nice little hundred x for you right there um yeah we're doing big things around here y'all um the goal is okay right now you might want to take a little bit of profits. I, I don't know that this lasts. Um, it's very odd that it's actually happening right now when there's so much turmoil going on in the markets. I believe somebody else just laid off some people. Um, God, I was watching King and Zay today. Um, some other crypto company laid off some people. Um, I know Coinbase has, I know Silvergate has. I think it was crypto.com. I think crypto.com laid it off some people. And they said, um, yeah, it was crypto.com. They laid off some people and they said they didn't account for the FTX screw up, right? Even though they told us everything was fine. So within the last like week, we've had crypto.com, Coinbase, Silvergate, and it was another one. Oh, Huobi. Huobi. So all of them have laid off employees. Yet we got bullish Bitcoin here. It's going a little bit kind of in the face of the market as a whole. And in here we go with CleanSpark, right? We, we were talking about it back then. Dollar something. I basically started 
I started getting into it at like 250. I wrote it all the way down, and when it got to 175, I was real happy <laughs> and rolled that boy back up. So that's how you got to do it, guys. Dollar cost average is the way out here. Let me actually fix that, even though that's not going to ding on us because the stock market is closed for the weekend. But let me put that back within bounds. All right, let's see here. So one thing to note is Davos. I think it's going on now. I think. Let me see. Davos. 2023 cuz it'll be interesting this is this is specifically i think they're talking about blockchain um <clears throat> okay so we got a couple days here So critical inflection point, they're saying. The agenda, I'm not, I'm just not subscribing to them to figure out what the agenda is. Uh, I'm not giving the cookies. They're talking Ukraine, they're talking cybersecurity, food and beverage, plastics, digital communications. CEO BlackRock's going to be there, apparently. See, and this is why I say World Economic Forum, they're, they're on, like, they're into everything. Because the CEO of BlackRock's going to be there, dude. Like, come on. CEO of BlackRock. <laughs> um, of course, Klaus Schwab, it's his outfit, right? Um... Okay, Queen Reina looks uh all right, Queen Reina. Um Okay, Al Gore is going to be there. I thought Jamie Dimon was going to be there too. Uh JP Morgan Chase um CEO. But I guess not. I didn't see him over there. So Maybe LCX and all the type of uh, World Economic Forum kind of tokens, maybe they stay bullish throughout this point, the 16th through the uh, 20th. So, I don't know. Maybe they do stay bullish be, be, um, like this whole time. So, maybe you might want to hold on to your LCX the whole time. Good evening, GT. What you... You think what Jenna Yellen said today about the hitting of the U.S. debt ceiling on the 19th or or 20th uh, has anything to do with this pump? Just woke up. <laughs> Thank God. Um, glad you woke up and uh, came into the stream. That's awesome, man. I appreciate that. Um, you know, uh, you can never tell what these things about yelling and uh, what Powell says, right? Um, honestly, I don't think Bitcoin should be bullish right now. Like like what I just said. Like with all these layoffs in the crypto sector, I, I, don't, I don't see why Bitcoin is bullish right now. But it smells like to me, it smells like a, okay, we're gonna get you happy in Gaga retail to get into the market now, and then we're gonna hit you with all the bad stuff later. Uh, Cause remember, uh, shout out to Crypto Neek. Uh, he's one of the ones first point this out. We got that Ethereum, um, we got that Ethereum Shanghai upgrade on Mar in, in March. Now that should give some selling pressure. Whenever the heck all of these tokens are let go, like say they turn on uh, FTX US tomorrow, and everybody was just like, great, I'm, I'm exiting. That could be a lot of selling pressure. 
like all of these tokens that are kind of out there with these closed exchanges, FTX, FTX US, Voyager, Celsius. Um, did I just miss somebody? Um, I think I got all of them. Oh, Ethereum, Ethereum, uh, the Ethereum staking. So there's a lot of tokens out there that can drop some selling pressure on us. So maybe they just decided, okay, it's the beginning of the year. Let's just hit them with it right now. Cause it's not retail doing this. It's not retail doing this. Um, and of course, um, you know, once the whole, um, once the institutions kind of adjusted their portfolios at the end of the year, maybe they just decided, okay, time to deploy some money into things that, you know, things are going to, we can hold on to for the next year, year and a half, right? So Bitcoin here, um, 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 Crypto stuff here, um, we know the Bitcoin halving is in 2024. We know the Litecoin halving is in um, August. So Litecoin, if you come over here and we take a look at that, it's bullish as heck right now. Litecoin, let's see. There we go. which is crazy. You could have had it right here in November for uh, 49 bucks. But you know, who cares? Like when you look at, not who cares, but you know, could have had it here for 49. But if you come over here and look how we followed LCX, right? LCX is almost like a, a triple, a triple of, um, where it's been right so um what's the better trade the lcx what's maybe better long term litecoin of course that's debatable right but um there you go right and since it just went over 20 everything's kind of making a move right now especially quote unquote uh banker coins um anything kind of related to uh davos is taking the move so maybe those davos related coins might be something for people to look at right now but insane i i didn't i didn't expect that we get this big of a move out of the gate not not this big not this heavy not what 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 all is going on like do you see how far we are over the RSI right now? Like, <laughs> this is just crazy. Crazy far over the RSI right now. And this is the day chart. Like, are there even any moments where we could go back to where RSI his screen that far like kind of here but literally you got to go back like two years uh since our, we've been this far over rsi okay maybe a year and a half 2021 crazy Algo is taking its sweet time, even though it, it has some of the best stats out there in the game as far as crypto goes, as far as speed, not being quantum ha um, hackable. Um, and they just did some something with the Bank of Italy, if you guys weren't aware of that one. Let's see, Bank. And this was not too long ago, like maybe December-ish. Yep, December. Choose the algorithm for a blockchain project. It 
So Algorand is still still moving, still doing some good stuff, which is good to see. Let's go take a look at that chart right quick for Algo. I don't think that's one of the ones I have saved, but I definitely do have some. Got my Algo bag packed. Yeah, it's 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 taking its time. It was sitting at like 17 or 18. It was the ones, one of the ones that kind of dumped a little bit more than expected. So if we kind of zoom in, it just kind of gained back five cents, which isn't, that's not bad. But in comparison to everybody else, it's not that great either. So if you look with everyone else, I think it's done that already. Yep, DAG has done that. Just did it on the day chart, um, but it did it. Litecoin is for sure done it. Yep, <laughs> for sure done it. Um, all the way to $90 now. Very happy about that. Very happy about that. Um, shout out to my patrons. I think we got in here at like 60 something. So that's a 50% gain. Um, if you guys are interested in the Patreon, a link should be in the description. Uh, yeah, every, everything else is is definitely over over the AAMA. Where where are we here? Matic is to Matic held his value really nicely though. Matic is one of the like few coins that didn't move too much um, after that June. June they had a bad time in like June, but since then they've been pretty solid. And probably destined to be over a dollar here. But yeah, this is definitely me. This is definitely uh not just retail. This is this is definitely um some institutions in here um doing a little pump up. Same thing goes for the stock market as well. Little pump. Which is no, it's no reason why these markets should be correlated, but they are. <laughs> they are correlated so it's crazy to see this um there are some some little hints and tips and tricks where um you could have been a little bit tipped off about this so um let's let's just look at those in that chart okay um so I use this eight EMA, like um, I forget what you call this, indicators list. So what I have here is the eight AMA, okay? The EMA, excuse me. And the 50 and the dark blue and the 200 here. Now, this is on the day chart. Now, if we want to go back to the four hour, that gives us even a little bit more clarity. So on the four hour chart here. One of the things you notice is um, when the eight crosses the 50, it's kind of a bullish time. But you can never quite tell because they'll it will play some games, right? But then when the eight crosses the 200 oh boy right so these are some some tips that you can look at when the eight crosses the 200 and when the 50 crosses the 200 probably going to get some bullish action because you'll notice right here the eight crossed the 200 but the 50 never really crossed the 200 here so no, no bullish action there. 
Um, so that's something you can do on your four hour chart is look at when the eight crosses the 200 and when the 50 crosses the 200. So whenever the lower one crosses the bigger one, you got some bullish action there. Conversely, um, when the, the opposite occurs, when 200 crosses the um, 50 and the eight, you know, you got bearish action, but okay. But just, just in the purpose of bullish action, that's a, that's a little bit of a tip for offer right there. Just for you guys who are with the charts and with trading view, I think you can get this chart for free. It's no biggie deal. What's up, Ace? So, again, guys, we got um, we got Davos coming up here, um, the 16th to the 20th. May want to watch some Davos coins. Um, I'm going to specifically give uh, the patrons some world economic forum coins to watch um, as this meeting is coming up here. Um, you guys know uh, LCX is one because we've always talked about LCX being a world economic forum coin, but I'm going to give them a couple more um, to watch here with the meeting coming up. Um, some heavy hitters like I just show you are going to be at the meeting. Uh, Larry Fink, chairman, exec, chief executive of BlackRock, $10 trillion under this man's control. Yet we almost never hear about who he is, his name, right? Everybody talks about Warren Buffett. Crazy. Um, Al Gore, you can see over there. Um, just a lot of heavy hitters in this meeting course because it's the World Economic Forum and then uh, Klaus Schwab itself founder executive chairman yeah so ton a ton of heavy hitters um, they're the board of trustees so they'll be there um, Pretty amazing that they got a former vice president of the USA on their board of trustees. Um, yeah, so pretty cool. What's up, RA? How you doing? So I'm going to release a list to the patrons of some things that haven't moved that much yet. Um, one of which we kind of just talked about. The rest of I'm going to give to them those guys, but one of which we were just talking about Algorand. It hasn't moved yet, and the way that you can kind of know that is um, if we go back here to the day chart, but you can you can actually see it here too, not just the day chart, but the 50 has just crossed the 200 here on the four hour. And the um, eight AMA, it crossed it, but it was that was a couple days ago. But if you go to the day chart, It hasn't even crossed, the eight hasn't even crossed the 50 on the day chart. So, whereas a lot of the other ones, the eight is so far across the 50. Dag, I mean, just a little bit, but um, where is the one that I was talking about? Uh, LCX. way way across our oops that's litecoin damn it way across i 
I really expect this thing to be fake-ish. Um, again, I told you guys, we had tons and tons of layoffs here. Um, and uh, check out uh, Gentleman of Crypto today. They just let us know of a new bit of a layoffs. Crypto.com. They just laid off, I believe it was 20% of their workforce. And to be honest with you, this is a global, like it's not just in crypto. So that's another reason why I kind of expect this to fall at some point. There have been like global layoffs. Amazon has laid people off. And you know, as Amazon employs the most people worldwide. So it's not, it's not just crypto, but. While it's still only 1% of Amazon's 1.5 million global employees. So they still, you know, so they laid off 1% and they're trying to make it sound fluffy over here. It's still only, it's only 1%. So they plan to lay off 10,000 people. Wow. <laughs> Freaking Bloomberg trying to make it sound, sound better. <laughs> They're laying off 10,000 people. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just not them. I could, I could go into so many companies is doing it. But for, for us, like the most important thing is um, the crypto companies. So really, when you look at that, you can kind of think maybe that there's going to be like a global. Like we're already I, I feel like we're already in a recession, but, um, you know, maybe this heads us even further towards recession or even depression, dare I say. But, um, you know. Yeah, so, so I think at some point, I, I think this is just a little bit of a fool's gold. Um, we got a long time. Like, remember, guys, uh, Bitcoin having doesn't happen until, like, May 2024. So we're so far away from that. Okay, they say it's March. It always moves because it's, it has to do with like hash rate and all of that, like how many things have been hashed, uh, mined and all of that. So it always moves a little bit. So as of right now, it's gonna occur March 30th, 2024. So we still got a year and like over three months, right? So really can't expect Bitcoin to go any more than like possibly 30K, right? But um, I don't know if it continues past 20, but let's, let's look at it chart wise and, and see what we can find out by the chart. So I told you guys once if it if it got over uh, nineteen something that it could do some damage. Where is our GAN chart? I don't know what happened to my GAN fan here. Okay, there it is. I don't know why it's down there. If I go back far enough, it should be coming back. Okay, never mind. I'll just bring it up there. Oh, this is killing me.
Okay, there we go. Or actually, <laughs> that was not what I wanted to have happen. Bear with me, guys. Okay, it's a little messed up. I'm just gonna have to keep going back until I find I don't know how the hell this happened. And if it refuses to give me what I want here. Okay. Um Bear with me, guys. So sorry. Okay, there we go. Move to existing pane above. There it is. Gee, God. Okay. Boom. Okay. That's what we want. Okay. So... I see how Gan Ganja's new stuff, because look at how that falls just like perfectly right at where the 20 EMA or the 200 EMA is. So if it crosses the 200 EMA here at 2100, I guess we're, we're we got, <laughs> we got a good, uh, okay, where is it? 21. 21.22 basically, or, or yeah, 21.2. Uh, if we crosses that, we got all the way up to, and it happens again. We got all the way up to 2300, 235 for it to go, and it still wouldn't be at that point I'm not sure that it'll still will uh, 50 cross the 200 at that point I still don't think so um, let's see where we are on the four hour chart if we drop it down to the four hour okay so as far as the four hours concerned We're, we're in bullish territory. As far as the day is concerned, we're not. I don't know, guys. It's just so, it's so, uh, it's so fugazi to me. Thank you, guys. <laughs> It'd it be killing me. That mouse be killing me, man. Um, like, y'all know I had that stroke, right? So, like, my shoulders still don't work properly yet. Like, it's it's almost there. <laughs> um, what's up, Kid Graybo? So, really, there's still a lot of... Um, there's still a lot of uh, good stuff out here, guys. Um... Like I said, for my patrons, I got that stuff um, concerning the coins. Um, I'm going to have that list for them. But we can look at some stuff. Like, if you look at the stocks, right? Clean Spark. Clean Spark still, like, such a freaking bargain. I know I've been talking about it since the 175. But if we take this boy out for two years... Look at that. Still, we got so much room here, boy. So much room. So much room. Like, even on the most bullish coin that we just looked at, um, LCX. So, like, of course you don't want a FOMO, 
into anything, right? But at the same th- at the same time, things are still so low that I don't even know if you could call it FOMOing at this point. Cause look at LCX. It's it's at like seven cents now, but let's take it out to the day chart. And we said the same thing yesterday, right? Well, let's pull it out, out to the day chart. We still got so much room, right? It's at seven cents right now, but it was as high as 56 cents. So even if you bought it right now, you still got like a possible 8X in it and it's an exchange token and it's supposedly, you know, the most regulated exchange token because, you know, it's a member of the World Economic Forum. So still got a whole lot left in it, right? Um, coins like, well, XRP, that's a, that's a special case. Let's look at coins like uh, HBAR if we if we don't. So much left. Like, okay, it's sitting at five cents, but it was as high as 60 cents. So even if you were to kind of quote unquote FOMO right now, you still got five times 10 is 50. You still got about a 12x in this. So, yeah. Now, understand though, understand though, if you do decide to buy right now and Bitcoin pulls back like half, like, which is what it could do, I, you, you know, you could see it pull back to like a, about 18, right? Um, does, does Hedera go back down again to like four cents? Yeah. And do you like lose 20% in that one moment of time? Yes. However, the play or, you know, I don't know, you know, make the, make the decision that's right for you. But personally, if it's me, the play is uh, when the Bitcoin next halves. So I'm not really caring about that 20%. Because I know when Bitcoin halves again, Hedera is going to be over 60 cents. So I'm going to get my 12x out of it. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's how I'm kind of think of it, thinking of it. What do I think about ALBT? I think ALBT has a very, very bright future. Um, let's go check out its chart right quick. It's one of the ones, it's one of those banker coins um, that's going to be heavily needed. Um, banking has a liquidity issue right now. Um, so they're going to need crypto to kind of fix that liquidity issue. Um, and AOBT is going to be one of those cryptos that assists with that. Um, and the reason you know that is if you go check out their website, which we will in a couple seconds. Um, you'll see some of the big partners in the game of banking cryptos are actually allied with these guys. Um, so they didn't like, okay, they 2X'd if you had bought it from January, right? Pretty much. Um, again, but we've been talking to all of these coins since then. So you can't say on Black Cruise channel, you didn't hear about it, right? But um Again, if we take this guy out and we come down here, it was as high as a dollar and 40 cents here. So we're talking about it's sitting at eight cents right now. It's still a mega deal, mega deal. Like imagine that it only gets back to like, what's half of that, 70 cents. You still got like an 8x out of it. Right? 
eight, eight cents times eight is 64. So you got over eight X out of it. If it just goes back to 60 something, right? Um, but again, CBDCs, according to Fed now, are supposed to be rolled out this year sometime around July. So these are some of the coins that I might actually move. Um, I gave my patrons last week, I believe, a list of the top CBDC coins. Uh, this was probably also on the list um, along with some others. Um, so maybe we see CBDC coins take a move this year. And I just happen to have Alliance Block up. They're teamed with some of the biggest guys that are going to do something in that area. Quant, we already, we've been over Quant and how with LCX, they're working with CBDCs, right? Um, if we go down here, we see, we're going to see Hedera. Well, Energy Web, we've been over how Energy Web it's going to basically be like that energy commodity broker. Okay. So they're teaming with them as well. So anybody who wants to like buy energy on the open market can use Alliance Block with traditional finance and um, with um, also block um, regular blockchain finance. They can connect into Alliance Block and buy energy commodities from Energy Web. Hedera, we already know Hedera's teamed up with uh, IBM and Hyperledger, right? And we got some other ones on here like Flare, Elrond, Pentagon, Polygon, huge, right? Ava Labs. Binance. We know uh, Ocean also here. Amazon Web Services. Huge, huge, huge list of people. And remember, they want to seamlessly bring together DeFi and TradFi. We already know Quant's a big player in that and they're teaming with them. So anybody who Quant teams with on their overledger will now also have a a, a a connection into Lions block. I don't think I went and specifically did quant and alliance blocks partnership just so we can look at it. Okay, so here we go. I'll take their cookies, I guess. Sure. Quant and Alliance Block announced partnership. New partnership allows Alliance Block to offer Quant's network uh, overledger solution to parachain projects and SMEs listed on the Alliance Blockchain platform. Exactly what I just told you, right? Um, but you know, at least you have it here, you have the receipt for it, right? We're excited to partner with Alliance Block so that we can jointly help foster innovation and expand, expand the blockchain ecosystem. Our Overledger operating system and Century AML and KYC product can help new startups create new products that weren't possible before. This will allow Overledger to become a mainstream tool, offering an easy access to blockchain and hence the decentralization of blockchain technology. Okay, so got it right there, right from the source. Very welcome. Blue Lint Sash. Sahin, Sahin, Sahin. So um, very nice to see here. 
Um, another one of these sectors that we might want to watch, we kind of went a lot into banking. Um, one that we may want to watch coming up here is uh, Metaverse. Um, specifically, um, things like Meta, things like Unity, uh, we might want to watch those in the stock market. Um, coins, we might want to watch. Let's see how Sandbox is doing right now. Let's bring those guys up. So they're doing cool, you know, 36 cents all the way to 65, a near double for those guys, right? There's so many, there are so many things, man, that just has near doubled since February and especially since uh, the whole uh, FTX deal. So Sandbox might be one of those ones to look at. Um, another sneaky play, where is uh, the graph right now? Infrastructure play. Okay, so they went from five to seven cents. Again, another one where if we zoom it out here, Crazy. Look at that. Look at that. Like two dollars and fifty cents. It's like still so so cheap. So it's like, and I'll get into this some more tomorrow when we talk about um I'm not getting off right now, but just letting you know. I'll get into this some more tomorrow on Gentleman of Crypto Show. Um, my Gentleman of Crypto Show at uh, 9.30 a.m. I'll also be showing it on uh, Black Rue Investing. But um, as soon as the market fell here with the whole FTX thing, oh, that's me. I meant right here. As soon as that market fell, regardless of if we thought it was going to go lower or not, that's something we should just hop in on and dollar cost average if it goes lower. Because um, the people that are always telling you it's going to go lower, it's going to go lower. It's like, just, just you know, it's low now, okay? I'm not going to, I'm not going to be like the guy, keep, you know, continuing to wait for something. Um, I think it's like a parable or something like where God says like, okay, you know, you were drowning and I sent you like three people and you chose to deny them saying you're late waiting on me, but that was me who sent the three people. So what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Um, let's go. Has Polkadot ran out of steam. What's up, Pele? How you doing? Uh, ApeCoin, you know how I think about that project, man. Uh, I think... They're gonna, um, they're definitely gonna find ways to incentivize that project. I just kind of like in the feeling that I don't want to be a part of that anymore now that I've done some research on some of the things that they talk about. Um, check out my Rockfin and I go deep into um, the stuff that they talk about. But, um, just besides what I think of it morally, if I just look at the chart here, yeah, ApeCoin seems like a pretty good buy. Nice 5x in it from where it is right here. And uh, I'm sure their marketing is very brilliant. Um, I'm sure they're going to do something like, you know, a second land drop or something like or, or testing on the, the other side that'll um, make their coin worth the while. Um, definitely 
we're talk, if we're talking metaverse, this definitely might be something that you want to put your um, look into. And I even believe LCX um, sells ApeCoin as well. And that's the World Economic Forum, right? So they 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 sell ApeCoin. I think I think this project is here to stay. Um, so yeah, I think it's a good buy of where it is right now. Um, it's definitely it wasn't okay. Like we missed uh, you missed the three three dollars three dollars and thirty cents, but still, like I said, the whole goal is like it's gonna next Bitcoin having is probably gonna be back at twenty five again. So, you know, it's still an undervalued asset right now. Um, yeah, which were the other ones? I think you mentioned one other one. Polkadot, yeah. So Polkadot, um, I think Cosmos has passed Polkadot at this point in time. But um, Polkadot still has a lot of stuff that they're doing where they're like, in with the gaming people or not gaming i'm sorry in with the um world economic forum people like for example if i had to pull up lcx parity partner ship so Purity is a company that actually builds and it makes Polkadot. LCX actually um, is partnered with these guys. And I think we see Polkadot actually having LCX's blockchain on it at some point, okay? Um, so if we look at their partners, you see Parity Technologies here. If we come over here and we read this, LCX chooses Polkadot to advance their security token standard. You'll see here, if we come down here, like, the Liechtenstein Pro, uh, Protocol a proprietary protocol to deliver a chain agnostic token standard will be built on top of Polkadot's blockchain solution. The Liechtenstein protocol aims to leverage the Polkadot network to strengthen a solution that will enable token issuers to access secure, reliable, transparent, and compliant infrastructure for digital securities. So all that spells to me is LCX will build their own blockchain on top of Polkadot so that it'll be a substrate or its own blockchain either way because um, you can be on Polkadot and not necessarily be a substrate um, and that they are also trying to have a blockchain in place in order to sell digital securities. So. Polkadot's gonna be big in that. But as far as here in like America, because this is more of a LCX thing, and LCX is in Liechtenstein, so they're overseas. Here in America, I think Cosmos is gonna be bigger because they seem to have this um, alliance with the Ethereum. And I've referenced this before, but um, there's a CoinDesk article where an Ethereum consensus guy talks really glowingly about uh, Cosmos. I'm not going to go over it again for uh, any regulars that are in here, but you can read the article, but I'll just give you the glowing title. I think it says something like Cosmos, Cosmic Cosmos or something like that. There you go, Cosmic Cosmos. And um, these guys were both fighting over the right to who's going to have an interoperable blockchain. And I think uh, Cosmos has passed uh, Polkadot at this point in time. But I said all of that about LCX just to say, I don't think Polkadot is like trash <laughs> in any means. But I just think if you had to choose between Polkadot and Cosmos, 
I would go with Cosmos. Um, but uh, Polkadot might be another one of those ones that are probably a slow mover. Um, let me go see if it's moving slowly right now. Okay, not bad, like 25% growth. So it went from like 419 to five something. So not bad for Polkadot. Again, <laughs> remember, if we go all the way back here, still is as high as $55. So here you're getting almost a 9x if you buy here at 566. Just saying, just saying. What's up, Casper Holstein? Um, any opinion on XLR? I looked into XLR for like a hot second. Let me see if I can pull them back up again. From what I remember, I think they're attached to Polkadot. I think they're attached to Polkadot. It should tell us quickly here if we look at. Everybody loves these X symbols. I'm sure that means something. Oh, wow. Yep, there we go. Polka dot right there. Bam. But also Cosmos. So, hey. They're, uh, on, they're on both sides. <laughs> they're on both sides. Cosmos, Polka dot, Ethereum, Avalanche, they're on all sides. Osmosis. Well, Osmosis is on Cosmos. And Moonbeam is on Polka dot. Secret is also on Cosmos. XLR delivers secure cross-chain communication for Web3. Our infrastructure enables DApp users to interact with any asset or application on any chain with one click. That's pretty cool. Seeing as how they're clicked up with all of these guys, so I could create a D app and I believe this is exactly to what um, ArcBlock is doing. Um, so, but anyway, XLR is saying like, I can make one D app, it's gonna work for both Avalanche, Ethereum, Polkadot, and Cosmos. And of course it's gonna work for the other ones because they're attached to these. But. Ooh, wait, that's interesting. That's interesting. Enough for Coinbase and Binance to invest in them. That's interesting. This is really interesting. Let me see uh, where the price history is. Okay. At one point, it made it to a dollar. It kind of saw one bull run. No, it didn't. Wait. Why does that say 21? But when I go back, it says 22. Okay, okay. It's, that's October there. I, I'm sorry. I thought I was, I was reading something wrong. No. Okay, it's just the days of that month. Okay, my bad. Okay. Perfect. So it has not seen a bull run. It will it came out in 2022. The bull run had already passed by this point. It has not seen a bull run. What is its supply? Only a little over a billion. 
Nice supply. I might, uh, I'll have to check this out. Do some more research on it. But that sounds, that whole concept sounds cool. Sounds a lot like, um, sounds a lot like what uh, Arkbach is doing. And smash the likes, guys, if you haven't already. Please smash the likes. Also, guys, we're going to have uh, Bird Dog and uh, My, C, My C Crypto, My Comedy Crypto, on the channel. I would love to know from you guys what you would like us to talk about. Um, if we want to freestyle it, if you want us to talk about like best coins in 2023, uh, where we see the crypto market moving, um, best sectors to invest in. I don't know, throw something out there. What is up, Musa Lee, Vera? Let's look at Vera. Vera's one of those lotto plays for me. Like, uh, uh, Vera's one of those straight up lotto plays. Like, I'm under a cent. Put some money here and just don't think about it. If it goes to zero, whatever. But they actually do real stuff, though. So, Vera. Then picked up. So, it was at... Oh, two, three, it's moved up to three. I don't know if you want, if you want, if you want Vera, I think, I think Vera has a good future. They're, they're, they're with some of the biggest names in the game as far as like 10 cent, right? Um, they're doing some heavy things in the gaming sector. They have their own freaking uh, Twitch. And they're teamed up with a publicly traded company called Bright Cove. Like, Vera, Vera is so, there's they're, they're such a, a great um, lotto play. Let's check this one out right here. So, Vera Views delivers first third party developed ad Plug-in for the Bright Cove web player. So NASDAQ, B Cove. Let's just go over here, check them out. B Cove. Bright Cove. They're on the floor, just like a lot of other things in tech. Let's look at their earnings. Calendar. Okay, so every year they're growing their earnings. They were from the 40s, the 30s, the 20s, so they're growing it slowly. Bright Cove, okay, not not bad, Bright Cove, not bad. So they're working with Bright Cove, and let's just see who uh who Bright Cove is, shall we? A provider of cloud-based services for the video ecosystem. The firm targets its solutions at media, companies, broadcasters, publishers, and corporations. Bright Cove Video Cloud is the firm's flagship product, enabling customers to publish and distribute video to internet-connected devices. Video Cloud generates a significant portion of the firm's revenue through subscription-based service uh, software as a service model. Other products include Zencoder, a cloud-based video encoding service. It generates a large majority of its revenue in North America and Asia. So, back to the medium. So, 
we know about their technology. Veraviews is an open ledger um, advertising ecosystem built around Veracity's te patented proof of view technology. So the proof of view technology for anyone that doesn't know Vera, it prevents a bot from actually counting as a real view. So now when you go to a, um, a customer comes to you, um, they don't have to say, okay, I'm only gonna pay you 60% of what you're asking me because 40% of your platform is bots. You can now say, uh, 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 look, I got this service. Um, I got Vera, I got Vera views. If you, use, if you pay for this Vera views plugin, 100% of your people will be all viewers, all real people. So, you know, you just buy that plugin, you just buy this Veraviews plugin, 100% of your people are real people. Okay? So, the publisher can just add this plugin and then 100%, they're done. 100% uh, real viewers. So, Elena Buyan, Chief product officer for Veracity says, integrating Veraviews with the Rycove play web player has been the primary target for the for their Veracity product team during 2022. We're incredibly pleased that not only is Veraviews not approved for use in a web Rycove web player, but it also passed a comprehensive review for plugins deployed on the Brightcove marketplace. We're now at a stage where any publisher using the Brightcove web player can plug and play Veraviews to begin protecting their advertising campaigns from fraud. So very cool. Something buzzed over there. LCX chunking down now from eight. Bounced off that resistance. Again, Gan knows what he's talking about, and those Gan fans bounced right off that resistance. So let's see, LCX tends to move with Bitcoin, so maybe Bitcoin bounced. Nope, <laughs> it's still going. Let's try to step down and see what we can see there. On the four hour, still solid. <laughs> That's a rock, so to speak. On uh, our all greens, third leg of a green here. 30 minute. No, I don't want to see seconds. Thank you. 30 minutes a little bit harder to suss out, but wow. Just look at that. Just real strong candle right there. Real strong candle. Yeah, I think they're still good. Um, I think there are a lot of other plays better than them, but I think they're still good. Um, especially if you want to like say like, okay, what's going to give me the most growth? Like if you think they will get back to ascent soon, that can, Vera could be a nice play. But but like I said, like, I call those lotto plays, but check out my uh, show tomorrow. I'm going to get into more about like plays like Vera and different plays like that. Check, check out the show tomorrow. We'll talk a little bit more about that. XYO. I don't know XYO that well. Tonic is doing well too. Okay. Solana seems to beat the storm. I do not know about Solana. Like, Solana seems a lot too big to fail. Um, they seem too big to fail, but who can trust them now? Who can trust them at this point? Sam just basically did whatever he want, like treated Solana like this, like, like his his call girl, basically. Like, 
I just don't know if I can trust Solana at this point. I can. I feel like I don't know. I don't know. Let's look at Solana. Let's look at it. I just I don't know that I can trust it at this point. Can you say it's too big to fail? Yes. Can you say there's a lot of bankers and people that have their money in it? And they're probably not going to lose it, right? Yeah, look at that. So $22 after being at, it was at eight at some point. So possible three X there. But this is so fugazi. Like it's, it's so faux. They don't have any developers. Like, King and Zay just reported on some type of... No, it was actually Crypto uh, Blood. Um, that airplanes were down for a while and they traced the like bug back to Solana or something like that. This is so... I, I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, when it was at $8 one could have made the trade to like make the trade you know what i mean like okay okay um you know it's too corporate people aren't gonna let it die okay i'll buy it at eight cents but at 22 dollars oh man i i I'd, be, I'd rather put my money in like so many of these other coins than to put money in solana at this point i have no faith in them absolutely no faith in them um could they work out yes but they're too big of a risk for me at this point especially especially at 22 dollars i have no idea they run this much i've just like solana's been so far off of my radar after what happened with sam bangman free like how can you even like all their credibility is gone and by the time that they gain back their cre credibility, I'm probably not going to want to invest in them. So I, I'm not, I don't even know what to say about Solana at this point. Okay, yeah, that seems like a good play. Cosmos and Atom instead of Soul. I even go like Filecoin instead of Soul. Like that seems like a good a good um a good bet at this point too um yeah i owe seems to be a solid project it's been out since 2017 and they are quantum proof in your opinion why are they having problems breaking through um iota i think is having problems breaking through because uh, Internet of Things hasn't been a thing yet to kind of be a little punny right there. Uh, <laughs> Internet of Things is not a thing yet. Um, but with the advent of Metaverse, this just, this whole thing just makes me sick. Like, this is like all like corporate driven garbage. There's no reason for this chain to be up to $22. Like this, just, just, this, this breaks all my faith and like, ugh, I, I just, I, I don't like that. Uh, we're just gonna move on from that. Um, what were we talking about? Solana's may have left a, a, a crappy taste in my mouth, dude. Uh, let's see here. Where were we? Iota. Okay, Iota. Um, the fact that IOTA is, um, it's also one of those um, ISO 20022 uh, coins. So I think when the metaverse gets into the fray, like more heavy, and when we have those haptic devices and stuff like that, I really think that's when uh, Internet of Things is really going to kind of kick off more. Um, so they wouldn't be a bad play if you're just like, okay, I'm gonna sit, just set it and forget it. Um, they've they've established a pretty good low. If they haven't moved that much, 
you can pretty much say, okay, they, they're not moving that much more from where they are right now. I don't really have to worry about a dump or whatever because, yeah, they've, they've been in this range for pretty much a long time. Okay, 16 to 20. Like, this is where Algorand is at, and they didn't, you know, they didn't move that much. So, so yeah, you can just invest in them and just know, look, okay, I'm playing the long game. I'm waiting for 2021. Uh, I can put my money here and just know it's not going to move that much. Um, this is an established project. It's been through two bull runs. So, you know, it's established. I know that my money is not going to go, um, you know, any lower than 16 or whatever since. Because it's been proven for um, seven, five years, five years now. Um, so I can just put my money there and just not worry about it, set it and forget it. Whenever they're ready for Metaverse, I, I, I can I can expect my my 20 cents to now become two dollars and give me a 10 X. So um, that's that's why I think it hasn't moved, because Internet of Things hasn't really happened yet. And I believe it will happen with um, Metaverse. A little bit of the Internet of Things stuff has happened like iWatches, um, you know, a couple different things have happened with that. But Metaverse, I think we're going to get haptic gloves. We're going to, we might get like, um, like the Oculuses are going to be really good. Like AR, VR is going to be so to the point where it's indistinguishable from real life. When you get there, oh, Internet of Things is just going to go bananas. Internet of Thing glasses, Internet of Thing like the haptic gloves, and the gloves might even go like, like you see on the Star Trek movies or whatever, where you're actually looking and seeing, um, you're you're actually looking and seeing different things. Um, so so yeah, that's why I think um, Iota has not taken off yet. Sorry, a little long winded. I didn't mean for it to be that long. Uh, poke network I looked at this a little bit um, too um, shout out uh, Pele um, let me go sorry about that where's my where's my thing Sorry guys, let me just uh, kill this for just a second. One second guys. One second, so sorry. Okay, sorry about that, guys. All right. Okay, back. Uh, Poke Network. Uh, I looked at that a little bit before. Um, they, I think they have some cool partners, too. Um, let's pull that up right quick. Why don't we? Pocket. I remember going on here and saying, okay, these guys have some cool power partners. But as far as cloud computing goes, I think uh, Filecoin might be ahead of those guys just because they got JP Morgan on their side, right? Um, JP Morgan's gonna pull a lot of weight in a lot of rooms, right? Um, Let's go down here, because I thought they had a, a decent amount of partners. Okay. 
Okay, so some of them are right here. A lot of them seem to have to do with Godsmosis. We got Clayton. We got Moon River, Moonbeam. Those are on the polka dot chain, uh, Binance Smart Chain, DFK Chain. I'm not sure who that is. Clayton. They're really big in South Korea. Um, Smart Chain um, got a lot locked up in their DeFi. Um, Gnosis Chain. <laughs> This, 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 that symbol for Gnosis Chain is so uh, occult. That's like a Moloch, symbol of Moloch, uh, an owl, um, OVO, which just happens to be uh, Drake's uh, name. But I digress. That's, that's, something, that's something for Rockfin to break down <laughs> these occult logos that they, they give us in um, crypto. But, anyways. Um, oh, okay. They got even more partners. Solana, Boba, Optimism. Very cool. Algorand. So, see, yeah, they do have a lot of cool partners. I can't tell what that name says. It looks like Swimmer Network. Near, Fuse, Iotex, Phantom, Mantis. Wow, they have a lot of partners. Ethereum, EVMOS. Um, Harmony One, Avalanche, and Polygon. A lot of partners. A lot of partners here. So this one might deserve another look. Um, I got some pocket put away somewhere. It's very small amount, though. Um, distributed computing and interoperability. That's cool. Um, let's look at the price history on it, though. Just sight unseen, just from their partners, that might be something. But look at that! Well, boom, and it did. It hasn't moved. It hasn't moved. So um, this might be something if you're really like confident in it, and their supply is not that bad. Only like one point uh, one five billion. Oh man, this is this is one that's kind of tempting. It, it hasn't moved yet, and they have a whole bunch of partners. Um, the only thing is, okay, the only thing is, okay, okay. Once this moves, it's not going to take much for it to double, right? But um, as far as the better project, uh, maybe that's Filecoin. But Filecoin sitting at like $3. So you really have to, you have to gauge yourself there. I, I don't know. Personally, do, do your own research on that one. But I will research this more and let you guys know some research on Pocket Network itself. But um, if I had the choice right now, uh, more of my money would go, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, more of my money would go to Filecoin. But um, it is very impressive that they have all of those partnerships there. That is very impressive. Um, and it's also impressive that they haven't moved it at all. And uh, they have not gone through a bull run. Because um, they, you know, they haven't gone through a bull run. They were made in uh, 2022. So it's very interesting, very much one to like really take a look at. And uh, if you can find even more deeper partnerships than that, something very interesting to look at. I'll definitely start this on my list. Thanks whoever suggested that one. Okay, those are limited funds. Five assets you recommend for thousand dollars for maximum gains. I now see that I have to say for the Patreon people, um, I guess I could give one. That I would really have to say though for for the Patreon people. But um, if I were to just give one, um, I don't know, I've always liked LCX, and I still like LCX, even at a 
Um, it's even at a seven cent uh, price range. Um, I just think LCX, with them being so uh, deep with the World Economic Forum, and, and this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to go out and buy uh, LCX or, or anything like that. Um, just LCX is something that I, be I believe in a lot. Um, but for anyone looking for specific list stuff like that, I would recommend uh, the Patreon for you. Um, but um, yeah, I, I like LCX a lot. They're getting in heavy with the um, the bankers and everything like that. They're going to be a highly regulated exchange. They're a member of the World Economic Forum. We just got through showing the World Economic Forum, right? You saw how they have on their board of directors Al Gore and Larry Fink of BlackRock, the like one of the richest hedge funds out there with ten trillion, ten trillion. That's a that's a thousand billion, you guys, times ten under their under their um, control, and these are their board members. Insane, insane. And, and I, I guess, you know, Al Gore would be their board member after, like, the way he lost that, like, election. You know, they're like, okay, Al, we'll give you, we'll give you this nice, cushy spot on the World Economic Forum, dude. You know, you just go ahead and hand that election over. We'll make sure you're nice and taken care of. We got your back, Al. So yeah, I gotta I gotta be mindful of my Patreons. Really appreciate them. We got a patron in the house actually over here, Casper Holstein. Shout out to Casper. Pro, um, I'm not sure about what I think about Crow, but at this point, um, where a lot of the things are in the market, I think a lot of things wouldn't be bad investments. Um, it's just finding the ones that will be the best investments. Um, They just laid off some people. Um, they were in bed with FTX, which is why they gave the reason they gave for laying off people. Max supply is not that bad, considering when you consider that um, Hedera and Stellar and all of those are like fifty billion, thirty. 0.26 is not that bad. Um, gap pump to 90. I honestly don't think they don't stay around, even though they laid off people. Everybody is hurting right now a lot. Um, and I'm sure this Bitcoin pump will help a lot of companies out, especially the Bitcoin miners. Um, I'm okay with I'm okay with Crow, but I think there are a lot of other things that um, have a brighter future than it. Not maybe not a lot of other things, but a decent amount of things. Um, I can name some coins that I would like over Crow, but um, Crow I I don't think it's a bad I don't think it's a bad um, investment. I think I think they do stay around. I it would take something really kind of catastrophic now to do that and to get rid of them. And I think they have already kind of after they laid these employees off, they could lay off some more if they needed to. But um, I don't think they're not around or anything like that. Like really, what's gonna be it is like in this next kind of six months, we got to see if some companies 
like DCG and whatnot. We got to see if there's going to be any more uh, fallout. And within the next six months, if if some companies can stay around in the next six months, then that next eight months to the having will be just a breeze. So really what you're going to want to pay attention to is the next six months for anyone who had kind of some FTX contagion. Um, who knows if Bitcoin gets up to 30 K, maybe some of these Bitcoin miners, maybe some of these people affected by uh, FTX, maybe they're out of the clear. Um, who knows? But um, just, just pay attention to some of these six months coming up. I'll have to do some more deep digging on um, I, ICP, but as I understand it, they're kind of like, put it, put it like this. Okay. So like, they're like, they don't need cloud services because they're trying to develop a platform that's like an internet. So that's why they don't need cloud services. Like literally, um, you would go over to them and uh, they're like your internet. Um, I'm like, imagine Helium, right? Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Helium or not. Um, you know how Helium had all these hotspots around, right? Helium was building its own kind of internet network and the whole thought of Helium was supposed to be all right, now um, Internet of, of uh, things, things can operate and they can do it on our network instead of another one. And then they shifted to move over to Solana, but Solana is getting a Solana phone, which nobody has updated us on yet. Um, but yeah, Solana, uh, they shifted over to Solana and the Solana phone, and they were going to be the network for Solana and its phones. So they were teaming up with T-Mobile saying, okay, Helium is going to be going to work and integrate in with you until we can just have enough power on our own to operate these Solana phones. So Internet ICP is something like that. Now, I just don't know, like Helium had that whole use case with Solana and T-Mobile. And that seemed really good until uh, FTX thing just blew up everything, right? Um, internet computer, they have to have some case like that happen. So whose internet computer going to grab? Uh, I feel like a lot better about them now that we know uh, BitBoy said that their dump, their huge dump had to do with FTX. Did FTX came in here and pumped them up and then dumped them down? Because I know uh, Internet uh, BitBoy was one of the first people that was out here. ICP, ICP, ICP. So um, apparently Sam, uh, Sam, uh, or not Sam, because you know how I feel about that. I feel the boy is a patsy. <laughs> I feel he's a patsy. It wasn't really him doing it. It was people behind him, behind him doing it. So I hate just saying Sam because it was I don't think it's him. Um, FTX, <laughs> FTX apparently made uh, derivative synthetic tokens, like fake ICP tokens, pushed up the price to a crazy price and then just shorted the heck out of it and made money on both sides. So um, ICP deserves another look and I'm going to try to take another look at it. Um, to see like, okay, where, where, okay, you got all this technology, how are you going to apply it? So it seems to me like ICP is like that. I hope that example makes a little bit of sense, uh, Pele. There was some, there were some rumors that FTX did it, or um, BitBoy said that there's some rumors that they did it. But some people also said that BlackRock might have done it. So who knows? Uh, Luna just really messed themselves up when they went and got Bitcoin for their stable coin. They weren't stable enough for all of that. So, <laughs> which is kind of... 
<laughs> that was kind of a, a punny type of situation there. They they unstable their stable coin with Bitcoin. They were way too over leveraged in Bitcoin. That was silly of them to do. But um, I understand now a little bit better why they did it because uh, Tether and some people do hold like Bitcoin and stuff like that. But Tether had like way more funds than them, I think. So. But shout out to King of uh, Gentleman Crypto. He was one of the ones, he was one of the first people to say like, why is this dude going out and buying Bitcoin? That doesn't make any sense. Why are you gonna unstable your coin? <laughs> he called that, he's called that like dead on, dead on. Oh, how to join the Patreon? Um, there should be a link on the description there. Um, should be in there like if it's not let me know i'll just go grab it from a video here so i just gave the patrons like last week i gave them top cbdc coins because i thought those are going to move first and then I just gave them some things that haven't moved yet in the market right now. Can I check out Seller? Yes, I can check that one out. Let me write that down. Do I keep up with AA blockchain uh, gaming? If so, any opinion on Alluvium? I don't keep up with that enough. Um, I don't. Um, Play to earn gaming has a problem to me, and the problem to me is um, how do you how do you stop people from other countries from playing and dragging down the volume? Because um, there was a point in time where uh, Axie Infinity, you guys remember Axie Infinity, right? Um, Axie Infinity was basically like supporting families over in the Philippines. And the reason Axie Infinity could do that is because ten dollars like american in the philippines a month is like a great salary i think let me see if i can find it somewhere i did a whole video on this so i want to i want to not like uh kind of speak out of turn because of somebody on the philippines like I, I i actually showed stuff from like what people said were that uh the average salary in the philippines So I think they're going to have that problem because if people from America really can't make anything playing it, they're going to lose like a whole segment of people over here, which might be okay for some games. Like maybe they only want people in Asia. Um, so yeah, like... So I thought I saw something where let's see. So typical yearly salary is like seven thousand US a month. Um so basically what is that? I don't know, but Basically, you, you you can understand the point, right? Um, like it's it's showing like, okay, if somebody in the Philippines can make like ten dollars a week on the on the game, like on on Axie Infinity, then it makes it makes it like more sense for them. 
um, if they can make, you know what I mean, like, uh, I, I think I kind of underestimated it here. Uh, I'm going to have to break out the calculator because I don't like having numbers and not being able to give something that's kind of proper. Sorry, and I can't make the quick math of that in my head. So 7,000 divided by 12. Actually, if I really want to do this properly, divided by 52 weeks, right? So basically, $100 a week is a lot in the Philippines. $150 a week. If you can make that on Axie Infinity, then you know you're you're replacing your salary. So and from the articles I was reading, it was even lower than that <laughs> from what I, from what I was reading. Um, but I'm just gonna take that one at at his word. But yeah, the the problem play to earn games have is like if someone in a, another country that has a lower cost of living than us um, can play the game and like Americans can't make anything, uh, it, it 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 hurts a lot. So um, I don't know if until play to earn games can figure some of that out. I don't know what's gonna happen. I think Sandbox and um, Decentraland don't have to worry about that as much because they're really planning on having people work in the metaverse and like take like live concerts from people from Warner Brothers Music Group, excuse me, in the metaverse. So it's gonna matter a little bit less for those type of things, but for play to earn games like Alluvium, it's gonna be really important that they figure out some type of way where they can make it so that they can keep up the amount that they pay out to people for playing, but yet people can't bot it and scam it to a point where they're just draining all the value of it, if that makes sense. I don't do anything with margin or swing trades or like, um, well, I do some swing trades. Um, any opinion on mining? Okay, let's get to mining in just a second. Um, okay, I'm gonna show you guys something, but I just wanna let you guys know that this is dangerous for like 95% of the traders out there. I would not suggest anyone do this unless they've had countless like at least they've been out here in a year in the game or two years or three years in the game because you can get highly emotional and um it's not good for your account i mostly only swing trade um and swing trade is defined basically as a trade that you're gonna say okay you pick a day and, um, you know, you, you're, you're, you're only going to hold on to trades for like three, as much as like three days to two weeks. Um, but since everything's been a bear market, you really can't swing trade anything. So mostly I've been holding um, um, at this point, but there's a possibility if you wanted to and there were like no trading fees um that's the other thing there too um if you're trading and there's trading fees trading fees are going to eat away at your uh gains but um take for instance clean spark okay and this is on the stock market in stock market you only get like you can only make a certain amount of round trip trades, but like, let's say if we go in down to the 30 minute on clean spark. Okay, so this 30 minute is a bad example. <sighs> this mouse, let's go down to the five minute. Okay, better example. So,
there is a point here at the top of this curve that maybe you can see, okay, you're getting to the top of this curve. One of the things that you can like kind of really see getting at the top of that curve and remember I told you guys, when you're at the top of a little white cough curve, here it's going to come back down here. Well, one of the things you can notice is, okay, it's coming off of that curve. It's already past this um, resistance line, so maybe it's coming down. If you owned a lot of shares of CleanSpark, maybe you could scalp a couple pennies off of those shares, right? Um, but I would not suggest anyone do that unless they've had a, a lot of trading under their boat because the whole bit of this can like really mess up your account and it can really mess up your menta mentality. Um, just like right here, we see that the AMA crossed the 50 and it went bullish. Remember I told you guys that was a bullish uh, sign. It, it that bullish sign continues on in short amounts of time as well as long amounts of time. Um, the tools the tools still apply. Be it long amounts of time, three hours, our day, all the way down to five minutes, like we were just seeing there. Um, but I I just wouldn't suggest anyone do that. Um, because it's 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 really it, you really have to know what you're doing to do that. Um, you could do the same thing here uh, with crypto. If you know what you're doing, and you don't have no any any trading fees, you can see here again. It's kind of small, but you can see here the the AMA crossed the 200 and the. Uh, the uh, what is that? The 50 and it went bullish. For that time, you could like scalp whatever amount, like that one cent or whatever, that um, point three cents right there or whatever. Um, if you had a big enough sum of money where you're playing around where point, like uh, point three cents, point, um, point, yeah, like point zero three cents actually made a difference. Um, you could kind of scalp that, but I wouldn't suggest anyone do that unless they seriously, seriously knew uh, what they were doing. Because um, it can really, really mess with your head. So just to answer your question, basically what I do is I'll just swing trade or I'll just huddle. For instance, like if there's certain catalysts that are coming up, like Davos, Maybe maybe one could have said, okay, LT, LCX is going to be bullish because Davos is coming up. I'm going to load up on LCX because um, the World Economic Forum is going to meet. That that's so so that would be something that's a swing trade event. Like you 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 know that they're going to meet. You get into the LCX like days before they meet. And then you decide, okay, when am I gonna let go of it? Like, remember how we came on here, right? And someone asked me, is LCS gonna continue? I said, no. And then the BitBoy video came out, changed the game, completely changed the game. And I was like, okay, the same person, I told them the next day, okay, the BitBoy video changes the game, right? So, um, you know, you got to be flexible and for things like that. But um, really, you got to kind of swing with swing trading. You're trading to a certain catalyst. Like, for example, um, I hold a lot of um, XRP. Um, I'm trading to the catalyst of not only that they have the, um, the case decision coming up, they also have... Um, possibly going um, possibly going public right so that's 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 what I'm trading to when it comes to XRP so I've been loading up and here we are right it's up 
Okay, maybe I could decide, okay, 25% is enough for me. It's, it's up 25% from when I, I had it, so great, boom, let me, clap, let me cash that out, let me move it somewhere else. But um, that's, that's, that's basically how you, how you play that game. Uh, mining, uh, let's see here. Mining, I think, mostly is dead um, because Ethereum was the one that you could get the most gains from. Uh, at this point, what can you get a lot of games from? Uh, you could mine, you could dual mine Litecoin and uh, Dogecoin. Um, miners are pretty uh, cheap at this point. If you want to go out there and get them, certain certain miners, if you're willing to kind of like fork over the money, like a lot of people. Um, they knew that they know that miners are, are, are lucrative, so they price them appropriately now. Um, you could go out there and buy a Kadena miner, and it'll pay itself off in like a year and a half, but you got to drop a lot of money for it. Let's see here uh, Kadena miner. Like, it'll pay itself off in not too long, but. Like the amount of money it costs for him right now, you're gonna pay a pretty penny. So there you go, Kadena Miner, two thousand dollars. How long will it take itself to pay off? I'm not sure. I'm sure you could find some uh, people that do, that do um, videos on that type of stuff. Voscoin is pretty good with that. V O S K Voscoin. He talks a lot about miners. Um, yeah, I would check out his channel. He does a lot of mining content. It's just not, not something I can touch that much. Like if I see something like like um, helium miners or something like this, that this that piques my interest, I'll say something about it, but um, he really talks, he really goes in depth on miners like for a regular, a, like a regular basis. So he would tell you like how lucrative that it is right now. But yeah, I don't know that I would buy it off of Amazon. Um, I, would, I can trust something off of Amazon but uh, Goldshell, I think, has their own company. And I think uh, Voscoin has his own links, his own um, Patreon or um, his own affiliate links. And I would trust those because those are companies that he sponsors or that sponsor him. Um, but I wouldn't, I don't think I'd grab anything off of Amazon. All right, then, guys, I think I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Remember, um, I'll be on a general in crypto, 9.30 a.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time. Uh, good show on there. Good show. We're going we're gonna to look at some good stuff tomorrow. Um, thanks so much for coming out, guys. Um, have a good one, guys. Peace.